Hi everyone. It's so fun to see you guys. I knew I had missed you, but I missed like seeing the names come in made me realize like, oh, I really miss them. And it's, it's so fun to see you. So I saw the first question and I will answer it now. Um, so the first question I saw asked was how did the surgery go? So it went fine. Um, they ended up postponing it until Wednesday instead of Tuesday because my doctor got sick. So, well, first, first the place where they were going to do it completely shut down. And then my doctor got sick and had to get tested for coronavirus. Um, and so he didn't have it luckily. Um, but so it got backed up until Wednesday and in the late afternoon and, but it's been fine. Like you could probably see, I have like, you know, this weirdness, but it's a lot less than they said it would be. They thought I would have like a black eye and a lot of swelling. And so it's a lot better. So nice to see you. And my husband got me good ice cream. So it's all fine. I haven't even needed any Tylenol or anything. So there you go. Yeah, no, he luckily he did not get Corona. Yes, Simon, it is irony that <laughs> my doctor got sick. I know it's kind of funny. Um, but it was so weird at the hospital, you guys, because when you walk in, it like everything was blacked off. They had these um, bars and they had hung black like sheeting from them, uh, like plastic sheeting to prevent people from sitting in the emergency room waiting area. And you had to check in and wait. It was it was very surreal in there. It was just very, very surreal. And yes, indeed, just another fangirl on the interwebs, it was Bluebell. It was a new Bluebell flavor called Cookie Dough Overload, which I highly recommend. Um, I highly recommend. And they do not allow visitors at the hospital. Um, okay, so I see games, games, and covers. When do we get our diplomas for completing Mrs. Van Star's class? I, I think that's absolutely a cute idea, and I will, I will definitely get to work on that. I will definitely get to work on that. Um, let's see. When you donate cookies, you have to do it through glass. Tell me about donating the cookies. I want to hear about that. I don't know what you mean. Um, and I'm interested in your questions. And I also want to share, I thought I would share with you what I'm reading right now. So this is the book I'm reading right now. I think a lot of people have already read it. It's more of a grown-up book, so I don't think a lot of you may have read it. But um, I am really enjoying it. You know how sometimes you start a book and it takes a while to get into it, and then other books you start and almost right away you know you're going to like it? This is one of those second kind that as soon as I started it, I knew I was going to like it. So um, it's a it's about a man and I already have got a lot of water on it because I was reading it in the bathtub last night <laughs> um but it's about a man in 1922 who when he is 30 years old is sentenced to um basically life imprisonment inside a luxury hotel in Moscow and it, I obviously I can't help but think about the bet and so I just wanted to to tell you about that um Okay, what got me into teaching online? What got me into teaching online was that I had written an article for my website, which is giftedguru.com. I had written an article on that um, three weeks ago today. I had spent the whole day writing an article with, like, um, with ideas for distance learning and stuff that people could do at home, like resources for home learning, essentially. And then the next morning, I woke up and thought, well, what else could I do? And then that was when the idea came that, oh, I could, I could stream like an online class. And then that took over my life for the next two weeks. Okay, so people choose, I'm looking at Cookie Cookie's response. People choose to donate Girl Scout cookies to the hospital. You live in Pennsylvania. And there's a little shed that people talk to these workers. So we put the cookies through the window. Oh, that's cool that people donate Girl Scout cookies to the hospital. I... My husband just finished a box of Girl Scout cookies. Um, there's, there's a crust at the bottom. You can see the black bar, so you can stretch to fit. Oh, I did. Okay. My husband says I didn't do the stretch to fit part that I need to do. I, I feel know. like I did. But let me do stretch to screen. So maybe that's a little bit better. Um, you might see something just a little bit different there. Um, okay, what was the, there was a question then. Um, how do I manage teaching such a wide range of grade levels? So I didn't, um, I, I set out doing, okay, let me do seven through 12 because I, I can do, like I wanted to do something broad and there wasn't that much out there for 
like tweens and teens, like those secondary upper grades. And so then I thought, what could I teach that could appeal to a bunch? And I knew it would be harder to do units on certain things. And so I decided to do short stories because I could do a wide range. Um, and I, I appreciate that question. I, I think that it helps me that I've worked with a specific group of students for a long time. Um, like I've worked with wide ranges of, of groups of ages because I used to coach something called academic decathlon, which is a 10 subject, basically really big competition. And it has students in grades nine through 12. And I've always taught lots of different grade levels. I've, I've never been just a ninth grade teacher, or just a 10th grade teacher. I've always taught like ninth and 10th and 11th or ninth and 10th and 11th and 12th all simultaneously. And then I also used to teach elementary school. And so I think all of that together made it, um, made it that way. Uh, okay. Let's see my new permanent class. I'm going to talk about that. Um, and then I'm going to make an announcement in just a minute. Do I remember SHG? Yes, I do. And that was so fun. I still remember the room I was in at that school. Yeah. Um, Oh, Erin says that she's they're making care packages for military troops that are being quarantined after coming back from a deployment. And um, Chuan says you have a box of snacks for delivery people. That's so cool because um, my, my youngest son is an army officer, actually. And right now, he is, um, he's a linguist for the army and he is translating documents related to COVID. So that's interesting. We used to have a box of snacks for our delivery people, but frankly, we're just not getting that many deliveries right now. I'm just not ordering that much, but that's really cool. I love the idea of the, um, of the cards. That is a really nice idea. Um, I'm curious in New York, I, my family's from upstate New York. My, my dad is, um, as far as literary programs, is there another city in which you would like to live, not Dallas, or do you feel so attached to people's you'll stay for the rest of your life? So, I'm not originally from Texas. I'm originally from California. And I love living in Texas. And I think that I will probably, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, my husband and I talk about sometimes like what would make us leave, but our oldest son um, and his wife, they live near us and they have this baby. And so, um, and actually she's, she's gonna be two years old. And so, um, and they're expecting another baby. So I probably won't go anywhere as long as I could do the grandchildren. <laughs> um, I, I like the grandchildren, so um, they're fun. Um, and so, oh, I see, like that's good thing I'm not in California now. Yeah, well, you know, uh, California is very different than it used to be when I was growing up. Um, it's a very different place than it used to be. So I'm happy that I can see these these things come through if you have any questions. I don't know, is anybody ready for the announcement? I got a little announcement here. Um, so let's let's do it. Okay, so the announcement. The announcement that you've all been waiting for. Well, maybe you weren't waiting for it, but I've been waiting for it. Okay, so starting next Wednesday, um, oh wait, I, did I skip a slide? I think I did. No, the announcement, there we go, the announcement. Um, starting next Wednesday, we are gonna do a book study. And um, next Wednesday, we'll start with an intro to the book. So it'll be on the same channel at the same time, so 12 o'clock. Again, it'll live stream, but just like always, you can go watch the recording if you don't have a live stream available or you're busy at that time. And so, um, the book is in the process of being chosen. And so um, that will be announced. I'll say that. The book will be announced tomorrow. And I'll announce it on the Gifted Guru Facebook page. I'll put it on Twitter. And I'll also type out a little announcement on YouTube. So if you're subscribed, you'll see a little announcement that you got that. And um, so I will pick the book today. And then I will make the announcement tomorrow. You will not need the book for Wednesday's class because that will be just a discussion, like an introduction to the book. But and and I plan on taking about a month to do the book. So once a week, meaning through the book. Now it will not be as a signy, but it will so more of a book club than an assignment. However, you see that asterisk, it's because 
there will be stuff to do if you want to. Like if you're somebody who would like to use that for, um, for language arts, you'll be able to. So he said, is her name Oma? So Oma is my grandma name. So we used to live in Germany when the kids were little. And so my children call me Muti, which is the German for like mama. And the German grandma is Oma. So um, she, she calls me Oma. Actually, she can't really say it. She says, ma. That's what she says. Um, okay, so that's what the announcement is. It's more of a book club than an assignment. So I'm going to go back and move this here. Okay. Um, do we read certain chapters every day? So I'm going to give you, like, I'm going to say that when when I choose a book, which I haven't done yet, that's a, a, a little behind the scenes production going on right now. But when the book is chosen, I will tell you next Wednesday how much of the book I'll be prepared to discuss the, the Wednesday after. And I'll do that every time. So like by next week, I will be discussing through page whatever or through chapter whatever. Um, I'm not really on Instagram. Um, let's see. Can I do? But maybe I should be, right? Maybe I should make a Mrs. Van's English class on Instagram. Thanks for that tip. I'm not going to do wonder. Um, I've got four books that we're choosing from. And it will be, what time am I going to post it? Uh, in the morning. I'll post it in the morning, tomorrow morning. And I, I, I probably... I, what I will probably do with feedback, that's a good question, Fiona. What I probably will do is um, do, uh, choose just a couple things to do the feedback on. The, here's the problem is that I, well, the, not really a problem, but a, cha a challenge is that I, I, ha I have to actually work. And when I was doing this short story class, it took like 14 hours a day, all day, every day, seven days a week to create the class, create the slide deck and, and evaluate the writing. And so like seriously every day and, um, I, I can't, I can't do it because I have to, I have to get back to work. So, um, so I haven't a hundred percent figured out how I'm going to do that because I really do like giving the feedback and I really do like giving the opportunity for people to write. So I've got to figure out a way to make that happen. I'm going to be thinking about that if any of you have any ideas. Um, yeah, so it'll be like meeting once a week on Wednesdays at 12 until, um, I know it's sad it's only um, once a week, but um, it's, it's all I really can do right now. But um, somebody asked what the four books were that are being chosen from. And... Um, so I will tell you, and I chose them because I wanted, I wanted ones that were readily available and from possible different, different, um, genres. So one of the possibilities is here, here are the four and you'll, you'll know tomorrow what they are. So the four possible books are, um, the, the, sorry. The first, the, there's an adventure one that is um, My Side of the Mountain. That's fantastic. I love that book. Um, if I Stay, which is kind of the book with all the feels. There is a classic of Mice and Men. And then there is a sci-fi fantasy book that is interesting because it is like, um, it's basically the... It's basically like the um, Napoleonic Wars with dragons. And um, so I am very curious to see. So there is a group that's picking this for me, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, classified information about how we're doing that. But um, we're, it's going to be one of those four. Uh, so I see you own my side of the mouth. So, 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 so good. Um, I love that book. I've read it multiple times. Oh, so the, the title of the fourth one is His Majesty's Dragon. His Majesty's Dragon. And um, so that's fun. Yeah, only 24 people watching. That's kind of what I expected. I told my husband I thought there would probably be like 10 people. So you're actually more than I expected. Um, and so, yeah, I loved Of Mice and Men, but it was super sad. Yeah. So I do have, um, I do have like kind of a 
backstage thing going on of how that book is being chosen. So um, if you, if you're someone who was really interested in the class and you're interested in this, shoot me an email um, just at lisa at lisavangamert.com. Just shoot me an email there and let me know and then we'll, we'll help you out with that. Um, and so, yeah, the dragons are, ooh. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's an interesting thing to choose from because they're very, very different books. I recommend them all. I recommend them all. And <laughs> that will be everyone. I'm not sure. Actually, all the people who are in here right now are people who were really active in the class. And so I think that's great. And actually, a lot of you are already in that little group. Um, so I don't even have a preference. I, I chose four books that I feel like all of them have something strong to offer. So even if one of them doesn't get chosen, I highly recommend them. Um, the, yeah, the gang is all here. Um, the almost, I was missing, somebody was missing who I was expecting. Um, in any event, uh, the Of Mice and Men is a short classic. So I wanted to have a classic choice, but that was not going to be something like, you know, War and Peace that would take forever. So um, those are the four you'll know tomorrow. And that should give everybody plenty of time to obtain them. I tried to pick ones that were, um, that were available right like because one of the books actually the book the all the feels book choice that I wanted was a day no pigs would die which is one of the few books that's actually I read it as a read aloud as a read aloud sorry a read aloud to my uh, 11th graders one year and because I read aloud outside and I read aloud in class no matter what grade you are I'm going to read to you and I did a read aloud of a day no pigs would die and it was the first book I ever read aloud in class where I was crying so hard I couldn't even read the book. <laughs> and um, I just love that book so much. But when I went to go look at um, when I went to go look at it on Amazon, it because I just went, in case it wasn't available in the library to everybody, I wanted to find books that were readily available on Amazon. And it really wasn't. It was expensive, and it was. Um, it wasn't like there were only a few copies that were at a reasonable price. You could get it in Kindle for a reasonable price, but if somebody wanted like a very reasonable price, but if somebody wanted um, that, uh, the actual paper book, then it wasn't really readily available. So I didn't do that one. So I was sad. Um, so I'm looking at some of these. I read practically only sci-fi and fantasy. I, you know, the sci-fi and fantasy genre has become so popular in especially young adult literature. And I think that's great. We all let, like, I hope that it leads you to good sci-fi and fantasy because there is a lot of good stuff. Um, but I also hope that it will lead you to some of the background. Like one of the things that I would, that I really considered doing was good Arthurian legend. Um, because that is that Arthurian legend is like the basis of almost all sci-fi and fantasy and well a lot of sci-fi and fantasy like Tolkien and Lewis they are very religious based but a lot of others arose from Arthur which is also somewhat religious in nature so I love Arthurian legend if you're a big 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 sci-fi and fantasy f fan you should absolutely read um a lot of Arthurian legend and the one this is the one I'm typing in the name of the like must read um, the once and future king so that is like the must read I've taken entire classes on Arthurian legend I've taken two entire classes in college on Arthurian legend once in undergraduate and once when I was working on my master's so it's such a good book and I am a huge Harry Potter fan but you know Harry Potter um, she she based a lot of it on like Norse mythology and other mythologies. Like very little of Harry Potter was just out of her head. In fact, we uh, like I have when I just reread all seven of the books and I kept thinking, oh, that's in da da da. Oh, that's in da da da. So I do just love Harry Potter. How can I type and talk at the same time? Well, remember that I there's a little delay, right? So 
you're seeing me seven seconds later, so then I get a little bit. But it is it is tricky. I'm trying to watch the chat. So one thing is that's interesting is that I can in YouTube I can pop out the chat. So I actually have the chat popped out and over to the side in a box. And Aaron, that's a great vote of confidence. There's nothing I can't do. That's actually not true, but fun. It's so fun to be with you guys again. Like it is so fun. Um, Harry Potter is basically astronomy. Hmm, interesting. Um, hugely religious, so you don't enjoy it very much. That's interesting. So, um, the Harry Potter is a very interesting idea because the world building is very strong, but it's world building that pulls from other world building that's been done. So it really rewards the reader who's read widely. Um, all of the, every single one of the spells in Harry Potter is an allusion to something else. Like you can go find them. So it's kind of interesting. Um, so I'm seeing, what is KOTLC? I see, Tessa, you put KOTLC, what's, what's that? I don't know that one. Um, so Percy Jackson, of course, based completely in mythology. Um, yeah, so yeah, it, I don't think that, when I say Harry Potter, has a religious vibe too. I don't mean religion in the sense that it's associated with an established religion. I just mean that it definitely has a spiritual view, right? Like in the sense that there is a, a battle against uh, good against evil. There is a um, kind of heaven along in the same way that you see in Star Wars, where like after they die, people are available. You see the same thing in Lion King. Um, and all of that are, all of those things are components of religion. So um, Harry Potter, just a mix of Percy Jackson, and a whole bunch of other books combined. And I wouldn't agree with that because it was not, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't completely agree with that. I have not read Nixia. I have not. Um, yeah. Oh, it's definitely not as religious as Lord of the Rings. I mean, Tolkien does not apologize for that. So if you're unfamiliar with that, J.R.R. Tolkien is... He and C.S. Lewis, were, and who wrote Chronicles of Narnia, they were writing um, at the same time. They were professors together, and they were both deeply religious men. And, but they had very different views on how their religion should inform their writing. So C.S. Lewis believed that it should be very much a part of it, that like you should definitely read it as a Christian allegory. But on... Um, but... Tolkien believed that it should be more subtle and that people should read it without being confronted by that, but rather able to interpret it from that. So it's very interesting to see these two people who had very similar worldviews, but how differently they put it forward in their writing. So I guess I'll have to um, mention, I'll, I guess I'll have to check out Nixia because it looks like, there you go. Um, yeah, the Narnia series is interesting. I, I think Everybody should read it, mostly because there's so much allusion to it later. Um, but I definitely think that if all you read is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, that's okay. Like, I don't think some you need to read the whole, um, you need to read the whole series in order to get it. But I think with the Chronicles of Narnia, I think you can just read Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Some things are just, um, some books can be read as a standalone and some really need the series. Like, I think you can read the first Harry Potter without reading the rest, but I don't think the last Harry Potter would make any sense without the last. Um, so there you go. Keepers of the Lost Cities. Okay, well, taking book notes here. You guys are going to add to my to-be-read pile. Um, I don't know how many of you have. I'm curious. I'm curious. Okay, who? what are you guys reading right now? Or what's in your to-be-read pile? Like, And I'm also curious about whether you like um, audiobooks, whether you like books on like a Kindle or other device, or whether you like an actual paper book, I will tell you, while I'm waiting to see those come in, I will tell you that, um, I ha always have four books going. So I have one book that is like just a regular book that I'm reading. I have a book that I'm, an audio book that I'm listening to. I have a book on my Kindle that I read at night because I, like then it, it can be the light. And so I don't need to turn on my bedside lamp. I can just read from the light of my Kindle. And then um, I also have a um, 
book I'm reading in the bathtub. <laughs> so I have this little tray across the bathtub and I leave a book there. And so whenever I'm in the bathtub, I'm there. So let's see. Um, okay. So Mark of Athena. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Fiona likes a paper book and I see a lot of them too. Yeah. Like I feel like it's a different experience, right? Like it's a different experience. Um, I, it's a different experience to read it. I think that there's a saying, the medium is the message. And I think that's true. Like, do any of you have this experience that when you have, if you're reading on a device that you can be reading, you don't even know the name of the book that you're reading or where you are. I feel so lost sometimes in those. Um, okay. And we were liars. Ooh, we were liars. Ready Player One. Oh, you know, I haven't read the book. I saw the movie. It's one of the few things that I read. I haven't read the book and, almost, and saw the movie. But my son, who really likes sci-fi, loved the book Ready Player One. It's one of the top listings. Um, so, okay. So, Kurt Kemmerer says, I'm currently reading Ways to Disappear, a novel about translation by a translator and novelist, Idra Navi. That's really interesting because... Um, I love I love to read books in translation because it tells me more about English. So that's interesting. And Deb Coatney's thing about you learn less when reading digitally. Yeah, actually to read for learning, I would never read on a device. I mean, I think 20% is generous. The studies are 100% that um, you your reading comprehension is much lower when you read on a device, which makes it so sad that so many schools are going to like reading on a device when every single research study done shows that your your comprehension is so much lower um oh greetings from witness protection is a great book okay cookie cookie when you posted greetings from witness protection earlier i thought that what you were saying was greetings i'm in witness protection i thought you were kind of making a joke i didn't realize it was a book okay <laughs> that's kind of funny all right Oh, the book is different. From, Nerdy Fangirl says that Ready Player One is entirely different, the book from the movie. And isn't that so true? Jay Sand, The Selection. Okay, I have wanted to read that and I have gone to put it on my holds in my library because the first one is always checked out. And I, I want to read that first. Um, and yeah, Fahrenheit 451. So we read that short story by Ray Bradbury and Fahrenheit 451 is like amazing. Yeah, and you also, so Cyrus is saying you can't take notes as well on device either. Yeah, it turns out that the important part of taking notes is the actual like writing of the notes because when you type, you can type faster and it just kind of flows through you. But when you're writing notes, you have to synthesize and paraphrase and that thinking process is actually what the... Um, what the most important part of taking the notes is. It's not even reviewing the notes. It's the actual physical writing of the notes with your hand. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, Anna liked selection. Okay, so it kind of looked to me like Princess Diaries. So I'm kind of curious um, to see that. But I like to read, I don't read a lot of young adult fiction, to be honest, but I do like to read some of it. Um, okay, are any of you like me where if you're reading a book and you really love it, you like deliberately slow yourself down at the end because you're so sad that it's ending and you get really upset if there's no other books or you finish a sequel or you finish a series and then you just feel like, oh, it was such a letdown when I finished the Harry Potter series the other day. I was just like, oh, um, okay, Jay Sand, I will have to read it. <laughs> I will definitely read it. Um. That's so funny. Maybe I'll just have to buy it if my library can't get it to me. Um, yeah, I get I get so sad when a series ends. I'm curious. We've seen some series that you guys liked. What other series um, have you guys liked? Have any of you read Wheel of Time? Any of you who are like sci-fi fantasy people? Or did you read Redwall? I'm kind of curious if there was a... Um, Deb Coney, you read just as fast as possible, but you do feel sad when finishing a book or series. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about if there was a series that kind of led you into reading. I find that especially with strong readers, there's often um, a, a certain kind of like gateway book drug almost where you read a book or a series and it gets you hooked on reading in general. Yeah, Redwall when you were kids, right? Like younger. Um 
Jane Austen actually said that, no, it wasn't Jane Austen. It was Anne Frank in her, in the diaries of Anne Frank. You read that after she finishes a book, she has to like take herself in hand for a moment. I think that was her. I know our libraries are closed too here, but I have a little free library outside my house, right in my front yard that I got for my birthday one year, a few years ago. And so we have books in there and little kids and, and adults, there's books for everything. A very large expanse of sea. Okay, I'm getting a lot of book recommendations in here. I'm very excited about that. A Wrinkle in Time, A Wrinkle in Time, I don't even know how many times I've read that book. I do not, a hundred, a hundred times have I read that book? I, And I love that book. I love that book. Um, so you started reading Lord of the Rings just so you could read it on vacation, yeah. Oh, Madeline Engel, The Lunar Chronicles. Um, you know what books a lot of people like that I didn't? Were the, were the Pullman books, like The Golden Compass. I did not care for those. Yes, little free libraries are so fire. Yes, I love my little free library. I put, I, I even have little reading buddies in it, little stuffed animals that kids can take, and it is so much fun. Um, okay, I will read Finding Perfect. I'm gonna have to rewatch this whole thing just so I can get all these book recommendations. Have I read the rest of the series? Yes, I have. I have read the rest of the series. I don't think they're as strong, and I think that sometimes happens. I think the same thing is true of The Giver. If any of you have read The Giver, which is like amazing, I think The Giver is so great. Um, uh, and Deb Coney says, you love the Golden Compass series. So that's kind of interesting because you mentioned earlier an atheist and I'm a devout Christian. And so I think maybe it was the anti-Christian feel of Golden Compass that I really objected to and I couldn't get past it. Um, Enid Blyton, yes, amazing, amazing. Um, the Giver, I thought, was fantastic. I think it is the best book ever written that explains why people need to be able to choose for themselves, like why it's never a good idea to force people into choice. But I didn't actually care as much for like Gathering Blue or the, the sequels to that. Um, I don't know how many of you feel about that. And I don't know how many of you felt like the um, that on... Um, what was the other one I was thinking that the sequels maybe didn't quite hold their own? There was another one. It just went through my mind. I'll figure it out. Um, Jay Sand said that there's a library that's doing a pickup system, and I think that's really nice. I, I, it's really sad. The Land of Stories is a good one. I think, like, I just want to go back to the Philip Pullman series. Just because I didn't care for a series doesn't mean, obviously, I'm saying it's not good. I think that that's why we need lots of books and lots of different authors because it's important to have something that everybody likes. And sometimes there's just like one thing about a book that turns you off. And I've had that with books that other people really liked and I didn't. Um, so, yeah. The Giver is fantastic. Um, yeah, okay, so people can not like Golden Compass, not just for the religiosity series. A Tale Dark and Grim. Okay, I'll have to look at that. Um, yeah, we have, Cyrus is saying you can get free books from the library, Libby. And we have that app. Our library has the Libby app and Overdrive. And I can get audiobooks and I can get ebooks there. It's just that, like, for those of us who want to hold the book, um, then that's um, that's trouble. Let's see. No Fear Shakespeare. Yeah, they do. Now, of course, I, um, I mean, I have a master's degree in teaching English, so I read Shakespeare just regular, but yeah, you're right. And if you, if you want to get into Shakespeare, those No Fear Shakespeare books are fantastic. So that's a great recommendation. I know that Plankster is like, all these series are going through the chat. I know this chat is going to be great. Do I always finish a book I start even if I don't like it? Okay. Um, I just recently, uh, the answer is no, but it used to be yes. It recently changed. And I now have on my Goodreads, I have a category called should have abandoned, but didn't. <laughs> and, um, I used to think that I had to read a book all the way through. And now I will give a book a hundred pages. If it doesn't get me in a hundred pages, then that's crazy. I, I, I just give up. I'm looking at this. One of you live near um, an author, and that is super exciting. Okay, since I live near Texas, who's my favorite baseball team? Astros, Rangers, are there. They're so. Um, 
my cousin by marriage actually played for the Rangers forever. His name is Mike Young. And so I have to be a Rangers fan. No, no way not to be. Um, so I like, I like the, um, you've got a title on good, Deb Cunning said, I've got a good read shelf that's titled Abandon. Yeah. I think if it doesn't, if it doesn't catch you, like there's so many books, right? You don't owe the author anything. You don't owe the book anything. You, you give them your time. Your time is your life and you don't owe a book your life, right? You want the book. If it's not speaking to you, then let it go. My favorite book, you know what? My favorite book, um, is like, okay, by favorite book, I mean, if I were stranded on a deserted island and I could only have one book with me that wasn't a religious text, like just a novel, then I would take a book called Middlemarch by Jane Austen. Or, no, I'm sorry, but uh, Jane Austen, uh, by George Eliot. So George Eliot is actually a woman named Marianne Evans. Um, and Middlemarch, the thing I love about Middlemarch is it's a very long book. I'm not recommending it to you guys. I don't think you should read it as a teenager. I think you should wait till you're old, like at least in your 30s before you read Middlemarch or you won't get it. Um, you, won't, you, won't, you won't appreciate it and you'll think it's terrible and you will miss out on this great experience. So just wait for Middlemarch. Like the day you turn 30, buy yourself a copy of Middlemarch. Although I will say that even as a teenager, you could definitely appreciate the BBC production of it. So watch the movie of Middlemarch. And then if you fall in love, then read it. Oh, if you read Adam Bede, if you liked Adam Bede, then read Middlemarch. So I did, who, who just said that? Deb Coatney, man, I love you. All right, so Middlemarch, the reason I love Middlemarch is that, um, yes, it was written by George Eliot. She wrote a lot. She wrote a lot of books. She wrote some of the most depressing books in English language, really. But um, I love Middlemarch because it's a story of a woman who named Dorothea Brooks, who really wants to make a difference in the world. She really believes that she has a purpose and she wants to fulfill it and she seeks to do so, but she's thwarted. And it's a commentary on the effects of the industrial revolution. It's a commentary on shallow thinking. And it's, it's a really, 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 um, Good book. And Deb Coney said that Adam Bede was really depressing, but good. And I think that that's true of so many of Eliot's novels, like The Mill on the Floss as well. It's true of a lot of British authors who were writing at that time, like Thomas Hardy, who, um, you know, wrote Tess of the Durberville, Durbervilles and some of the others that you might see, The Mayor of Casterbridge. Um, well, okay, Kurt Kemmer, I'm going to come back to Middlemarch in a second, but Kurt Kemmer says um, that... I had to root for the Astros in the World Series. No, because I'm originally from California, right? Um, Mr. Popper's Penguins. Yes, I love Mr. Popper's Penguins. Um, that I own that book still. Oh, Anne of Green Gables. And even that new series, Anne with an E, is really quite good. Your Desert Island book, How to Extremely Fast Obtain a Boat. That would be a really good book to have on a desert island. That is hysterical. Yeah, if you liked Adam Bede, you, you should try Thomas Hardy. Um, and also, and also like try the American novelist writing similar times like Age of Innocence. Um, and also I would say if you liked Adam Bede, mm, if you liked Adam Bede, you could do, um, well, I'm not saying I'm a Dodgers fan, Kurt Kemmer. I'm just saying that if there's a California team, my, my loyalties get split. Um, Okay, I'm trying to think of another one that I would highly recommend. Um, I, I'm going to come back to that. I want to go over to my bookshelf. My bookshelf is over there, and I like really want to go over there. I do kind of have a library in my house, and I've got well, I've got a lot of books behind me, but they're, like every room in our house has books. One time our son got his folder signed when he was in second grade because he, the teacher said he was lying because he said there were like 2,000 books in the house, and that is not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a lie. Um, you know what? I, I'm going to go grab a couple. Hold on. I'll be right back. Sorry. Pause. Okay. Um, I'm going to go grab a couple. Hold on. I'll be right back.
Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. Had to go to the bookshelves. Okay. Uh, Thomas Hardy, I would recommend Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Um, a little longer than Adam Bede, but worth reading. And um, this... Hardy said that the character in this book, the main character in this book, titled Tess, um, her name is Tess, um, that she was the character that meant the most to him. Of all the books that he wrote, she was the one he cared about the most. And so I think if you're going to read Hardy, start with the thing that he loved. Um, this is this is Middle March. I don't recommend this edition of it. If you do decide to read Middle March, like look at how tiny this print is. It's so tiny. So don't get that one. Um, and then a book, a more modern book that I think is worth it. And a, there have been a lot of books recently published um, that are focusing on World War II. And I've read so many of them. And one of the YA ones is um, Salt to the Sea. But one of the ones that I think that uh, teens could do, this one actually won the Pulitzer, is All the Light We Cannot See. I just recently read another one called Lilac Girls that was really very good. And there was another one called... Um, called We Were the Lucky Ones. So if you like those World War II books, there have been a lot. Actually, let me let me type in some of those titles here. Um, All the Light We Cannot See. Um, Salt to the Sea, which is kind of confusing that they have the similar titles. Um, and then uh, We Were the Lucky Ones was really interesting. And both... Um, both Lilac Girls and We Were the Lucky Ones are based on true stories. So Lilac Girls is about the um, about the experiments, like operation experiments that they did on prisoners. Let's see. Would you rather have your students read or you read to them? You know, um, there is one one more. Uh, I think it's really painful to listen to people who don't read well, read out loud. So I really focus on helping my students get good at reading out loud. So I don't make students suffer by listening to other students read out loud. Um, somebody asked me, writers still must understand that they write for both themselves and the readers. So leaning about which hardy work one reads first. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying like if you're going to start reading hardy, it's nice to start with a character he cared about because then it's more likely that the writer will make you care about that character too. And if you care about the character, then you're there. Um, so I have been to that World War One museum in New Orleans and I have been there and that is super cool. And my grandfather fought in World War Two. actually two of them. Books I would recommend for 11-year-olds. Actually, so if you go to the Gifted Guru website and you click on, I think it's called Shop. Let me open it up. It will take you to my like Amazon influencer page and I have books I recommend broken down by age groups, like by grade levels. So you can go to, let me let me pull that up and see. I can type in the, um, um, yeah, it's called just giftedguru.com slash shop. And, um, yeah, you, you'll be able to get to where I recommend a lot of different books. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is great, right? Answer to life, the universe, and everything. Um, and same answer to um, Christiana. Nice to see you. Um, books for 12-year-olds. I would see that there. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like, cookie, cookie, I just feel like if you're struggling to read out loud, here's, here's what's going, here's the thing. When you're reading out loud, you're not actually processing what you're reading. It's a different skill and you can't perform two verbal tasks at the same time. So the student who's reading is actually not comprehending what they're reading. Like they're the one person who's losing out. What they're focused on is the decoding. Even when you are an excellent reader, it's hard to focus on the reading and read out loud at the same time. So I don't like to have students read for long periods of time. So if I feel like it's important to them to hear the reading read out loud, um, I may have them read one or two sentences here and there, but either I will read to them or I'll have a really good recording. So yes, 42, 42, right? Um, and your throat starts to get sore after a while. Yeah, it's true. Although I have read out loud to all my children and in fact read out loud to my children until they all went away to college. Like his last day at home, I'm reading out loud to him. And I and I would read out loud for 
hours a day. We've read all of the Little House books, which actually I think right now, um, if you are looking for a book that kind of feels like this, I definitely think that I would read The Long Winter. I, I think I would read The Long Winter, um, the Laura Ingalls book, The Long Winter right now. It is perfect for right now. Um, such a good one. Yeah, a, a cookie cookie is right. Like you, you could be good at reading aloud, but you're not going to comprehend it. So, and Kira, who says, I don't like to hear people read. No, that's not weird. And usually you don't, um, usually it's because you've heard people who aren't really that great or they don't read fast enough. Like you can, you can read, you can read yourself much more quickly than people can talk. And because of that, sometimes your mind just gets, Bleh. even when reading aloud to parents, I find there's a somewhat blank void in a work where I read aloud. I can recall a lot, but not the same tip. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. hundred percent. You can read aloud and not even process anything. The long autumn. Now I don't know that book. I'm talking about, um, the specific one um, of The Long Winter, but that would be a good book too, The Long Autumn. Uh, let's see. Out of My Mind on there. That's cool. Uh, so I think one of the things that I do, if you listen to books like on your phone, if you listen to audiobooks, if they're going too slowly, that whatever app you're using will probably allow you to set the speed. I do that on podcasts as well. You can set the speed to be a little bit faster and then that way you can listen. Like I usually listen at like 1.2 and then that way I kind of go. Um, so I remind you of your French, te the English version of your French teacher. That's so cool. Um, okay. I think we are like, it was worth being here today just for all of these recommendations. And what I will do is I will take all of these recommendations and in that all the recommendations come through here today on that page that I said, and let me, let me put it in here. Let's see here. Let me type it in giftedguru.com slash shop. Okay. What I will do is I will create a um, list on that page of all the books recommended by Mrs. Van's English class. So everything that was put in the chat here, I will put that. Um, first day of grade seven, I heard seventh graders don't even know how to read. Yeah, so what happens is, is that reading is a lot of different skills. So reading is more than just decoding. And a lot of people think that they're good readers because they're good decoders, meaning that they see a word and they know how to pronounce it. But there's a big difference between, <laughs> and Kurt Kemmer is impressed with my timing. Um, there's a big difference between reading for comprehension and analysis and being able to write about what you read and being able to interpret what you read and apply it versus just decoding words. And so a lot of times we get students who they can read, you know, they can read out loud, they see a word and they know how to say it and they may even be able to define it. But the ability to actually analyze that text, the ability to do kind of what we've been doing the last couple of weeks with these books, right? The link doesn't work. Well, let me see. Um, honey, can you, is it possible to like copy and paste the link in there? Does it let you do that? Do you know? I don't know. I don't think he can hear me. He, he wears headphones while I'm talking because of Which that. Can you paste a link in the chat? Does oh, it let you do that? To the, on my gifted guru site, the link to shop. But you did it already. I, somebody said the link didn't work. I can't. Okay. There. So the answer is I can't put the HTTP in. So you like copy and paste that text. If you just put it in Google, it should go. But uh, if it doesn't go to giftedguru.com and do the, just go to giftedguru.com and just choose shop. And I'll, I'll put that up. I'll do that this afternoon. I'll go through this chat and pull out all the books. Making inferences is so difficult. It's true. Um, but one of the things is that it, the more you read, the easier it is to make inferences because you see the connections. Like, um, yeah, you can't do the, I can't do the actual links. Um, so what happens in your brain, like because your neurons are not actually connected to each other, they're separated by gaps called synapses. Then whenever you have a thought, a series of neurons fires together. And then as soon as you're done with that thought, then those connections dissolve. And then those neurons are available to be in another neural pathway. Well, 
when the more neural pathways you form, right? So like you're reading a book and you learn about that story and you make, you build neural connections, right? Like when we read the lottery, you guys made neural connections about some of the things we thought about, right? And so then, um, but then you, when we stop talking about lottery, those connections dissolve, but they're ready to go again. And so when you read something else that makes you think of it, just like I said that in reading A Gentleman in Moscow, I couldn't help but think about the bet, then the neural pathways that I created in reading the bet fire too. And so the more you read, the more inference you can make because more neural pathways are firing. And that's what inference is. Inference is when neural pathways are firing and thoughts come through your head. So the more you read and the more neural pathways you've got that are firing, the easier inference becomes because it's just natural. Um, so it looks like some of you have, um, it looks like some of you have some different, um, different recommendations and maybe giving some uh, like warnings, you know, like about how something might be, um, might be the like adult content and I can put a warning for that. Okay. So I see violet eyes. I see that I'll, I'll put that in the list as well. Um, so look at that. It looks like there are some lot. If, if you're recommending a book and it does have adult themes, please be sure to do that. Right. Please be sure to tell me that so that I can put a warning, um, put a warning there. Yep. So, oh, one thing you guys don't know is that during the during this chat, what my husband does is that he goes through and he copies and pastes things into a separate document for me. So then I go through it later. So if you put it in a bunch of times, then he he often has already caught it. So that's good. <laughs> um, you recommend Mrs. Van Star's class? That's fun. I'm super excited about this new book study that we're gonna do or book book club book discussion. That was. Lene's idea to do that so I'm super excited about it and I hope that we'll have fun reading together with it and I'm looking forward to reading some of all of this lots of us can do this oh you like gentlemen in Moscow um behind closed doors okay and thank you for the heads up that it has adult themes I I read books with very adult themes when I was younger I think um my mom was very willing to let me just read um, with abandon. And so sometimes I think I read some stuff maybe I shouldn't have read, but I, uh, at that time, but mostly not because I encountered anything that was really disturbing, but rather I just wasn't ready for it and I didn't get out of it what I could have. That was the thing. Oh, The Hiding Place. Yeah, that's good. Um, I read The Hiding Place when I was really young. And I think that was the first, like, World War II. no. Maybe I read it after Diary of Anne Frank. I'm not sure. Diary of Anne Frank is absolutely something that everyone should read. Yeah, um, Justin says, I read big books. Yes, like, yeah, we're all going to do a book club. We're doing the book club. It starts next Wednesday. You're, the book is going to go out. If you were here um, earlier and you, you, or you weren't here earlier and you missed the announcement, here it is. Starting next Wednesday, we will have an intro to the book. Same channel, same time, 12 o'clock. It will be recorded so you can watch it after. And um, I will announce the book tomorrow on my Facebook page, the Gifted Guru Facebook page. I'll put it on Twitter. I'll put it on YouTube. So if you subscribe to this channel, you'll get this list. And so that would be uh, super fun. So hopefully... We can all do that. It will be more of a book club than an assignment, but I will have stuff for those of you who really want to get into it and really get the most out of the book. But the time that we'll spend together will be more discussion time about the book. I'm hoping, even though the chat isn't as great, like it, it, the YouTube streaming live isn't as easy to have a real conversation as it is in something like Zoom or whatever, this is what we've got for the same thing. So um, this is, this is, what we're going to use. So, um, but that'll start next Wednesday. Again, I'll announce the book tomorrow. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you should see it as a notification. And, and I will also come back and edit the description of this video to put in what the name of the book is. And Fiona says, I hope you can set up an Instagram account. Yeah, I will do that. I need to make, you know what? I'm all about the post-it notes. Let me pull out a post-it note and I'll make an Instagram, um, 
they actually have a whole movement on Instagram called Bookstagram. Um, so I'll do it, an Instagram for Mrs. Van's English class. I don't know if you guys remember that I mentioned that I have that little finch who's built a nest out here. She is so busy bringing bugs. Um, she's been flying in and out today like crazy. So um, let's see. And the, let's see. Okay, the only World War II book you've read is Slaughterhouse Five. There are so many. You know what? Knowing you a little bit, Michael, I would, I would, I would do all the light we cannot see. I think you would like it. I think you would like it. Um. So again, if there are any of you who have been super involved, um, in the class, and you know, you could shoot me an email and say you want to be even more involved. We can do that. Um. And they do have that email chat. I don't, you'll have to, maybe Jay Sand can connect you with that part because I'm not in that. Um, so your mom's book club is I'm a word traveler. Oh, that is super cool. I love that. I love that. I'm in a few book clubs, um, actually. So you have a fly named Edna. That's hysterical. Um, Justice for Margot. That's awesome. You know what we did not have is Leech of Despair today. We needed a Leech of Despair. Have any of you ever read a book that had a Leech of Despair in it? That's fun. Um, you know what's interesting? I'm seeing Will's comment that he, he hasn't read Slaughterhouse-Five yet. And I think there are so many books that I feel like I should have read and I haven't yet. And I'm curious if any of you have any books that you feel like you should have read but you haven't yet. Um, so there we go justice for Margot. I know that story, that story just sticks with you, doesn't it? Like I mentioned it to a friend of mine who's an English teacher. She's probably, she's, she's a little older than I am. So I'm 53 and I think she might be closer to 60. I think she's in her late fifties. She's like, she still remembers it, right? Like some stories just stick with you. I'm curious of the stories we read, which ones stick with you. Um, all of them kind of stick with me. Like I can think something about all of them, just special moments in all of them, but I think probably like, oh, the lottery. But somebody mentioned, somebody mentioned um, an adult friend of mine, another uh, teacher. She said she hated the lottery. And I was like, oh, you should have been in class that day. I would have persuaded you. So if any of you have any other books that you want me to put in our recommended book list, be sure to do that. Um, be sure to put in the... Um, well, I have a 30-year-old son, so I certainly hope I'm older than 43, but thank you very much. Um, the Let's see. Any other books that you want me to include, be sure to let me know because I'll, I'll go create that this afternoon. So this afternoon, Mrs. Van has some chores here. Carve the Mark. I've heard of that author. Um, I've met a lot of authors. I do some work for the Library of Congress, and I've written the Children's Guide to the National Book Festival. I wrote that for a lot of years. And so I got to go be the escort for a lot of authors at the book festival. One year I got to be the escort for the um, guy who was the illustrator of all of the Ice Age movies. His name is Peter DeSevres and that was really cool. Um, so, oh, I like that you're putting in, okay, so Clan of the Cave Bear, absolutely adult themes, but a strong book. Um, Deb Coatney, I think would like that one. Um, but definitely adult themes. And then Star Darlings for 8 to 10-year-olds. I love that you're putting in some ones for the younger ones because I can put that in too. And when you put in the ages, that that helps. Um, Macklemore's books, yeah. Veronica Roth did do Divergent. Yeah, and that whole series, right? You know who, you know what's an, an author who I, her books aren't my style and I'm not her audience, but who I know is a super nice person is um the um is M marissa meyer because my parents started a book club for students who are in juvenile detention like in jail essentially and she was super kind to them super kind um hey anna the document isn't in there anymore i had to take it out because there are laws about my hosting um email addresses of younger people and so I had to take that document out of there so um yeah I don't know how to 
have you do that. Maybe um, you you could start a new document in there that I could leave up for a day or two, but that's really all I can do. There are really strong rules about that. It's a law called COPPA, and I have to be very, very careful not to break that law. I can get in a lot of trouble. So I'm loving these book recommendations coming in. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up. We've had, I'm really excited. I thought, I was like, I don't know if anybody will be there, but I don't know, it'll maybe last five minutes. But we ha I really enjoyed this. Um, yeah, you could add a new one. Yeah, that'll work. Um, I really enjoyed getting this, um, th this time to have a conversation with you guys. And I'm looking forward to... Um, the book reveal tomorrow and seeing that and oh yeah nerdy fangirl I'm so glad you like Marissa um okay Anna that's a good idea that's a good idea thank you guys so much for joining in look forward to the book announcement tomorrow and then also I'll put that other list up this afternoon and I'll create an Instagram and I'll put the link to the Instagram in the videos so there we go. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. I will see you back here on Wednesday, next Wednesday at 12. And if schools go back and everything, then maybe we'll change the time so that people could do it if they would want to. But as long as we're all still kind of quarantined or whatever, then um, we'll do it at this time. And Christiana, I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. Like all I have is this little bit and it's doing really well. So thank you. All right, you guys, we will see you next week. It is Mrs. Van signing off.